The basic construction of this project is to make a nine patch and then cut it into quarters. And the use of a rotary mat is very handy for this. So you just turn it and cut it into four equal pieces. You'll do that for all four nine patches and then you want to lay them out in the order that you want to sew them and then take it to the machine. To embroider the June Kimberbell Cuties table topper. And I went out to the Designs by Juju website and I chose this bees and flowers edge to edge embroidery design to go ahead and do the quilting on it before I do the applique embroidery with the watermelon. And I wanted to kind of explain to you why I'm choosing the size of the design that I'm choosing. So I want to explain what my thought is when I'm gonna be choosing from all of these designs. Now the table topper is 22 by 22 finished. So I want to choose a design that's going to cover just a little bit more than that all the way around so that it quilts off of all of the edges. And the way I think about this, so if I were to do, let's say multiples of the six by 10, it would take four passes across of the six inches wide, that's 24, which is real close, but the 10, two passes of the 10 inch design is too short. And then another pass of it would not be, that would be way too much. So just like now the seven by seven, I could use that, but that would take three passes of the design or four. So three passes would be 21 square. That's not gonna work. The seven by 12, we have the same problem. It would take four passes across, which would give me 28, and that's six inches too much. Now, 12 inches, I could do two rows, and that would give me 24, and that would be fine. So I want to find something that's close to the 12. And I decided on doing the eight by 12 vertical, because I can do three passes of the design, and that's going to give me 24 inches across in one single row because I'm going to match that end and this end and then do three passes of this across. And this gives me 24 inches down. So I'm going to have an inch all the way around extra on the 22 by 22 topper. That's kind of how I think about what design size I want to use when I'm going to do an edge-to-edge -edge quilting design from Designs by Juju. I want to print out this 8 by 12 design, and to do that, I'm going to use Embrilliance embroidery software. And you need to put it into some kind of embroidery software if you're going to print so that your printer doesn't change the scale of it at all. And I just went ahead and hit this little box up here on my window and made it smaller. So I've got in brilliance open. I'm just going to grab a hold of it and drag it over and drop it in. And I want to show you, so the, the design is eight by 12 and my printer prints an eight and a half by 11. And let me show you in the print preview what this is going to look like. I'm going to go file and print preview right here. And when it pops up, so there is most of the design, but you can see it cuts off right here. And I'm going to come up here to this little icon and click the next page. And there is the rest of it. So I'm going to need two pieces of the dime print and stick target paper in order to be able to trim these so that they fit correctly and then tape them together to create the entire design.
Now, this is going to want to stitch out three pages because it is going to do page one is most of the design, page two is the rest of the design, and then page three is a thumbnail of what it's going to look like with uh, thread colors. I don't want page three because I don't need it. I'm just going to uh, stitch it in white. And so I'm going to close this, or if I hit print, and this comes up, down here in the print range, I want pages, and I want from one to two. And that way I don't print page three because I don't need it and I don't want to waste my print and stick target paper. And you can tell it okay. I need to send this design over to the Brother Luminaire, so I am going to go up here to Utility and send to Solaris XP1. XP2 is the same. I'm just going to call it Bees and tell it OK. And all done. So I've got my design on two separate sheets of paper, and I get asked this question all the time. What do I do with this? Well, I just trim mine and then tape them together. So I'm going to take my ruler and this, let me get in here where you can see. There's a alignment crosshair line right there. I'm going to cut it one quarter of an inch outside of that alignment crosshair line. It just makes life pretty easy. So I'm making sure my ruler's straight. It does not have to be exact. This is to give you an idea of where to get your needle close. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is down here where it cut off, I'm just going to, I'm going to trim it right on that line right there too. I'm going to trim it right on this line and that's going to allow me to line up the edge exactly. So now here, I've got a little bitty edge right there with that cutoff line. So now I'm just going to peel this, okay, and I'm going to align it, get my ruler out of the way, exactly where it needs to go so the whole thing works. Okay. Now, I'm going to take some scotch tape. So now I've got the whole design. I'm going to tape this on here so it doesn't go anywhere. All right, that looks good. And now this piece, I'm just going to make sure this stays here as part of the backing so that it doesn't get super sticky on everything. That'll work. All right. So now when I go to uh, use this, it's going to come off in one piece and I tape the backing together but they don't really stick together that well. Still, it's very easy to use this. Okay, so I am going to trim this now so that it is straight and it is right close and exactly on that alignment line crosshair that's on the print and stick target paper so it's straight. Everything needs to be super straight. There. Okay. Okay, so now I've got my template and I'm my needle always needs to go right there. That's center. So here's my backing. I just have a plain white backing. I've got Pellon's 987F fused to the back of my topper, see? And everything is a couple of inches bigger than the topper itself. The topper's 22 by 22, and I've got a couple of extra inches on either side of the Pellon and also of the backing, and that's gonna allow me to get a nice tight hooping, okay. 
I like to use the pillon in these toppers instead of batting because if it, it ever needs to be washed, then the batting does not shrink. And the pillon is nice and it has a very low loft so you can set glasses on it or whatever and it's not gonna get lumpy and knock things over. So here's what I was talking about. I'm gonna go ahead and start this probably like this, okay? And this eight by 12, so this is going to allow me, because my, my start point is over here and my stop is over here. So I'm about an inch off of the side and an inch off of the top. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I can see right there's the end and I'm gonna put this right here and that's two. And then I'm gonna put this right here and that's three and that's perfect. I may not start so far off because I'm almost too close over here. So that's how you can kind of audition that and see that that's gonna work. And then I can also see that two passes because if I start this here, there is the end crosshair and I put it right here. It's just the perfect size. So the eight by 12 was a great choice. I can finish this topper and get the quilting on it done in six passes of the end-to-end -end embroidery design. I'm using my uh, Monster Snap Hoop from Designs and Machine Embroidery. These are on sale all the month of June. I will put a link below to where you can get these. You're gonna get a really good price on them. So I'm just gonna hoop the entire thing. And I'm gonna start over on the side like this. And I want to make sure that the edge of my topper is well within the edge of the frame. Okay, and it's also, so I've got an inch. I can feel the edge of the, of the frame, the hoop. I've got an inch all the way around. Let me straighten it out a little bit. But that, that's pretty good right there. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put the frame on, the top of the frame. You just stand it up on the side by the arm. Okay, and I'm gonna push it up until it's even with my finger right up here so I know it's at the top. Yep, that works. And drop it. There. So I am hooped. Now, one of the things I do wanna do with this and you can either do this before you um, hoop or afterwards. Is you want to take some tape. Even though this is fused, okay, the embroidery foot should not get up under there. But you never know. So I am going to, with about an eighth of an inch of the edge of the fabric being covered, I am putting down some of the OESD embroidery tape and that'll take care of that and make sure we don't have any kind of oopsies that we don't want. Yeah. And this will stay on throughout the whole entire process. There. You can either use the water soluble or the pull off. I like to do it within an eighth of an inch of the edge of the fabric so that the binding is gonna come up and cover it if any tape gets left in there at all. All right, so now I want to pull this off. There we go. And I am just going to set this right on here so that I know this is straight. And I, what I'm doing is I'm kind of eyeballing this line right here and this line right here and this line and I'm going to make sure that they are straight with the seam line for where the border attaches. So that's a um, little over an inch, a little over an inch, and a little over an inch. Well, we could go a little bit further. It's kind of hard to get it straight, but there, I'm happy with this. So now this is gonna give me 
This is exactly where I'm going to start my needle on center right here and let it do its full pass and then we'll unhoop it and do the second one and the third and I will do two rows of three and we'll be all quilted. I've got a designs and machine embroidery pre-wound bobbin. Love these. This is the Style A Class 15 pre-wound with 130 yards of size 70D2 continuous filament polyester. So very thin and light bobbin. I've got an Oregon 7511 needle and I am stitching using Dimes Exquisite Thread. Love that stuff. And my machine loves it too. I'm going to put in my hoop. down. Move this over here. Okay. All right. I'm going to pull up the design. I'm going to go to embroidery and the pocket for memory. And I sent it over wirelessly. And there it is right there. Bees. Let me pull it up and hit set. And embroidery. All right, I need to make sure that my needle is over the center crosshair. And I got a little bit of a ways to go. So now I'm going to go into layout and move. And I'm going to go up. See, that's, it's knocking at me. That means it thinks that this is too tall. I can't get to where I want to be. So that means I have to move the embroidery. I have to move the project down in the hoop. And that's why I have extra up here in the back. So the beauty of the magnetic hoop is I'm just going to lift this. I'm going to slide this down. So that's as tall as it can go where it is right now. So I'm going to put it right there. back. Y'all, that is, that is awesome to be able to do that. Make sure nothing's caught up under there. And I need to come more over to the side. That looks pretty good right there. Let me, um, I'm going to hit this W up here, the, which is the embroidery foot. I'm going to hit that. That's going to give me a crosshair illuminated down on the project and I'm almost there. Let me move just a little bit. I can't go up at all. I think that's okay. It's not exact, but it's only one stitch off. So I think it'll be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. Very sticky the first time you use it. Okay, smooth all this back up. Make sure we don't have anything tucked up underneath. I don't need any drama like that in my life right now, right? Okay. This looks good. It's nice and taut. I think it's going to stitch out beautifully. All right, let's give it a go. The light is green, so let's see how it goes. It's exactly what I'm looking for. That's perfect. Oh, that is so cute. Okay, it's going to take three minutes.
Okay, so now I'm going to get ready to do the second pass on this. Turned out beautiful. Okay, I am getting ready to stitch the second pass of this. Now, I don't care what the back of this looks like, so I did not turn off the trim right there. And the trim is the term that embroidery machines use to cut the threads underneath, if you have that feature. So it did make a little knot on the back. If I cared what it looked like, I would have stopped it. I would turn off the trim in my settings and then that way it won't cut the threads and then I would just pull the hoop out and leave long tails top and bottom, run the top thread through and bury it, uh, bury a knot on, on the inside. If you do not have the ability to turn off a trim, which you should if it automatically cuts, but if you don't, then just watch the design and stop it like the right before the last stitch and then pull it out and do the same thing. Leave yourself tails top and bottom. Uh, take a needle, a hand needle, and run your top thread through there and bury your knot inside. Now see, just like a long armor, if you were to take a quilt to a long armor, they want you to give them extra fabric on each side so that they can keep tension on the frame and top and bottom as well. And that's why you've got this extra fabric to be able to keep tension. Here is the starting point of my design. I'm going to take it and place it exactly on top of that last stitch so that that's where it should start. And I want to keep this level. You've got to find yourself some kind of measuring point. So from this stitch to this to this seam here, I've got three and one sixteenth. And over here, I've got a little less than three, so I've got it crooked. So, so I'm measuring from that seam line down to center. See, that's the only thing you kind of got to it, it's very handy if you've got a, a seam line that you can measure from. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy on these smaller projects. So let me set the ruler here and then I will set this other edge at the same spot on the ruler there as it is over here. Yes, so now I know it's straight. Okay, that's how you do that. All right, so let me get this as close to center as possible, and then I'll bring it up so that I've got fabric on the frame. Your, your machine likes to start as close to center as possible. And that's going to keep you from having to rehoop uh, midstream like I had to last time. So let me lift this so I can see it. Put that right there. There's my frame up here. Okay. There we go. So now that I've got that on, I'm going to go ahead and tug the bottom of it and make sure that I don't have bubbles in the back of the backing. Let me see. Yeah, that's a pretty hooping right there. See that? There's nothing wrong with tugging that out. And I'm going to tug the top too. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's kind of an unconventional way of doing business, but it works. And I also need to take my tape and run my tape again. A second. Just to make sure we don't have any drama. We don't like drama. Excellent. Okay. All right, now we are ready to go back over to the embroidery machine. So this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit OK because I finished that last pass. And I am going to uh, tell it OK. Now, 
I need to get the needle over the crosshair on the design. So once again, I'm going to hit the W up here and get my crosshair. And I need to move it. So I'm going to go to move and I'm going to use my jog buttons. That is pretty close. All right, so I'm going to take this off. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to go back into my needle plus minus menu. And I want to get a tail. I want to get the tail of the thread here. My tail. I'm going to hold on to it. Um, I'm going to do a presser foot lift or down and then back up and loosen my tension disc. So I get a pretty good tail right here. Okay. All right, so I've got a pretty good tail. Now I'm gonna hit plus one on the needle plus minus menu. And I'm gonna make sure that that needle is exactly over that other stitch. This is if you care what the back looks like. Um, let me put my crosshair down one more time. It's exactly on it where it needs to be. That's great, okay, so I'm gonna Press go. And I'm bringing up that bobbin thread. I know it's hard to see because it's white. That's what you do if you care what the back looks like. So I've got both threads now. Now I'm going to turn on the machine and let it go a couple of stitches because it's going to do its little lock stitches like that. And it's going to go. I'm going to stop it. And now I'm going to trim. And it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. And I'm going to let it do its thing. All right, we'll see you back here in a bit. This is turning out adorable, and it's so easy, you guys. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I need to make sure my backing is nice and flat. You can really see how pretty it is here on the back. You can see the quilting done. Yeah, you get the little knots, but um, like I said, if I cared, then I would pull these up during the embroidery process process. You can do that on a multi-needle too. It's the same, same method. Turn off the trim, grab your tail, start and stop it one stitch at a time. I can see the bottom edge of my stitching and I want to get my crosshairs. I'm kind of keeping an eyeball on them. I'm going to get this little bit over here right off the edge of the top itself and I need to measure from this seam line down here to the center crosshair and make sure that it is level. Get my hoop fairly straight on my mat here. So I don't have enough down here at the bottom to capture this base of the hoop. So I'm going to take a no-show poly mesh scrap and I'm going to put it in between the backing and the pelon to give the project something to hang on to. Go. Good. 
when it starts stitching it'll be its own it'll make its own tension so it's fine and we are nice and smooth on the back so we're ready to go I'll tell it okay and move down let me see my W There we go. That's right on it. Perfect. Okay, I've just put the hoop in for the very last pass. Look how perfectly this fits like this. Just could not be any better. Okay, and I'm going to go to the needle plus minus menu and go plus one. And it is exactly on it. Again, yup, perfect. I guess I could scooch it just a hair. This is another beauty of these hoops. You can uh, nudge if you have to, like a stitch. Perfect, all right. Perfect, looks good.